Hello and welcome to this week's Ramble. It's been a wonderful week, hasn't it? Weather-wise, I hope it has been for you down in the south. Although looking out the window this morning, it's pretty gloomy and rainy, but I guess the ground needs that at the moment. But um, anyway, I hope you've had a good time and enjoyed some of this great weather. It's not been quite so good in the news. Uh, our leader has, as we all know now, announced not unexpectedly that the uh, easing of restrictions is going to be delayed by a month which unfortunately means that choir can't uh, get back until sort of towards the end of, of July because the Department of Culture, Media, Culture and Sport, uh, they've not made any concessions at all towards singing. Um, it does seem terribly frustrating whilst it's wonderful to um, <clears throat> watch test cricket and see everybody there, all the crowds cheering people on. And it's wonderful in the football in the Euro 2020 uh, tournament, which I'm enjoying seeing the crowds there. Um, but it's rather galling to see all these people singing away. I know a lot of them are in the open air, but they're also quite a lot in clubs and things watching football on the telly. And they're allowed to do that but we are not allowed socially distanced to sing. Uh, it does rather stick in the throat, but I'm afraid I think that's how it's going to be until um, around the 20th of July. And just fingers crossed that that time we really will be free and we can get on with things again. So unfortunate, but it is as it is. Um, <clears throat> I suddenly realise each week I report about listening to Coral Evensong. Um, uh, I do do other things apart from listen to Radio 3, um, but I did listen again. I, I went on to you about St George's Chapel Windsor, how good they were, um, but I wanted to hear King's, King's Cambridge were on this week with a very straightforward programme, very sensible. It was the first service that had been broadcast live from King's this year and still one of the early um, uh, broadcasts with... Dan Hyde as the new director, who's just such an amazing, amazing musician. And it was great to hear Wood and E flat and Bearstow Save Us Our Lord. Uh, but the highlight for me were the Psalms. Everyone seems to be doing the Psalms unaccompanied at the moment, but Psalm 84, oh how amiable are they dwelling, has to be one of my favourite Psalms ever. And there's a lovely chant by Parry. Um, and I listened to that and I had about three minutes of total heaven just listen to that. So if you get the chance to listen to Kings, they were wonderful, but just listen to the Psalm. Psalm 84. They sang 82, 83, 84, 85. That, those are the ones set for this evening. Um, but wow, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So there we go. So I've got a few more strange facts for you again. I've rooted around. I'm probably scraping the barrel a little bit. You're probably thinking, oh no, what's he going to come up with today? Um, Anton Bruckner, Locus Iste, Symphonies, Wonderful, all those wonderful pieces. Um, he was obsessed with numbers, apparently. He counted everything he possibly could. Bricks, windows, statues, prayers, leaves. Um, it's even said that he knew in advance, before he'd written his, some of his symphonic movements, he knew how many bars he was going to include in a particular uh, movement before he'd even written it. Obsessed with numbers. Then two Frenchmen, both of them uh, the fashion police would be interested in. Um, Maurice Ravel, that wonderful, wonderful composer, impressionist composer. Um, he was definitely renowned for snappy dressing. And there is a story about one uh, once when he was on tour and he held up the concert for about an hour while he sent the soprano soloist to the local station where he'd left some of his luggage and he realised that his concert shoes were in his suitcase and he wasn't prepared to go on stage unless he looked immaculate. So that's Maurice Ravel. But that's nothing compared with Eric Satie. We've talked about him before, Mr. Jim uh, he, he was a bit bonkers, actually. A very, very eccentric man. Um, and I believe that he owned 12 identical grey velvet suits, 12, and he'd wear them every day um, until one ran out, uh, until it wore out rather, and then he'd wear another one, and then he'd buy another one. So he always had 
always wore the same grey velvet suits. He also used to wear a wing collar, a bowler hat, a coat and a rolled up umbrella. And it is said that when it rained he put his umbrella under his coat so that it didn't get wet. Bonkers. Totally bonkers. But he wrote some nice music. So there we go. Uh, here we go, www.swanishteam.com is the uh, website for the parish and it will give you all the details of what's going on over this weekend, um, online services and obviously morning services, live morning services, but sadly Coral Evensong at St Mary's still is no longer happening uh, until we can get back again. I mentioned last week that there was a wedding on Saturday, which there was, and it was actually lovely to see a, a wedding couple getting married in the church. That was a real lovely sign of uh, things just starting to creep back to a bit of normality. So um, for my recommendation for this week, and it's just a tiddly piece, I've, I've rec recommended a whole load of real epics, but I just suddenly thought of this piece the other day and I remember loving it as a choir boy and always loved it. And it's a piece by Malcolm Williamson um, and it is a setting Dinius est Arnius. It's a little motet, Dinius est Arnius. You know, it's the words, worthy is the lamb that was slain, etc, etc, etc. And, um, well, let me tell you a little bit about Malcolm Williamson. Malcolm Williamson was actually an Australian. He was born in around 1930 um, and he was very well educated. Um, <clears throat> And he came over to Britain um, and um, he spent a lot of time, he was a very prolific composer. He said that his main influences were actually the 12 tone uh, school of Arnold Schoenberg, well, that's what they knew as the second Viennese school, and Olivier Messiaen. So that sort of very dissonant feel um, to his music. But, I mean, he wrote an awful lot of music. Um, the other thing about him was he, 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 he was an organist. He did, used to play the organ, but he also um, was a nightclub pianist. He was very influenced by jazz as well, um, which is quite interesting. Um, he wrote symphonies. He wrote uh, all sorts of different uh, pieces, piano concertos. I'm trying to think as I speak. Uh, an awful lot of music. Um, but for me, my favourite piece uh, was Isdenius Esarnius. In 1975, he was appointed Master of the Queen's Music, uh, ahead of people like Michael Tippett, uh, Benjamin Britten, Malcolm Arnold, and it was very unexpected, and he was the first overseas uh, composer to be appointed uh, Master of the Queen's Music. Um, anyway, Denius Esarnius, it's set for four-part choir, organ, and treble soloist. And it starts off with this lovely melody, uh, and then the choir comes in. And going back to what I said about him being a nightclub pianist, I think this piece um, really shows signs of that sort of bluesy, smoky nightclub. The, the harmonies are nowhere near Messian or Schoenberg. It's very sort of uh, juicy, cheesy, I think, really. Um, it's, a, it's a very gentle piece, it doesn't last very long, but rather unexpected and rather delicious. And I learned this first as a choir boy at St Paul's with my choir master, uh, Christopher Dernley. And in later years I recorded it, so I'm going to point you today to a recording we made with the Salisbury Choir um, back in the day, um, which I hope you'll enjoy. You don't have to buy the record, but you can enjoy the uh, Dino Cisania. So, um, have a listen, see what you think. I think it's a very sweet little piece and a little three minute interlude in your life. So, let's do a little bit of singing, do a few warm ups, for warm ups, can't even say it now, for today. So I'll just pop over there. All right, so you know the drill by now. So think about your posture. Um, and let's start off this morning with a couple of sirens. Good. 
Okay, and let's do our the third, just going. Off we go. Flabby jaw. Ma bla la, 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 ma gentle with you there that was just the top G so not too bad I hope you made it all right good so I hope that will have helped a little bit just get you warmed up a, a tad um, anyway um, I hope that I might see some of you over the weekend uh, others before not too long and fingers crossed that it won't be too long before you can all sing together again but until then stay safe have fun and have a great week ahead <laughs>